Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, we have seen the data stream management system in detail with some of the other important topics such as stream queries and key issues in processing. Now in this video, we'll be looking into a very interesting and important concept of Bloom filtering, which is obviously used for filtering the streams. So let's have an overview of what exactly a Bloom filter is. So it is nothing but a space efficient data structure. The arrangement of elements inside this Bloom filter in such a manner that it makes it space efficient. Now if you talk about the specific role of Bloom filter, so the role is to check whether a given element belongs to the set or not. That means if we have a stream of elements and if we want to check whether an element belongs to that particular stream, then in that case we can use this Bloom filter. Now obviously the Bloom filter will give you either of the outputs, whether the element is present or it is not present. So if the Bloom filter is giving you the output as the element is present, that means if it is giving you the positive output, in that case there is no actual surety that the element is actually belonging to the set which says that this bloom filter is going to give you only a probable answer if it gives you a positive answer. It won't give you the surety that the element is 100% present in the set or not. This is applicable only if the answer is positive. But in the other case, if the answer is negative, that means the bloom filter is saying that the element is not present in the set, then in that case, it is going to give you the 100% assurity that the element does not belong to a set. It is going to say you that accurately. Hence, Bloom filter will give you only true negatives. That means if the element is not present in the set, then you can trust it. Now since Bloom filter is going to provide you only true negatives, so because of this, the recall rate will be 100%. Because every negative prediction is going to be 100% correct, hence the recall rate is 100%. I hope you are getting an overview of this particular concept. If not, then don't worry, we'll be looking into an example which will clear all of your doubts. So let's take an example. So always remember, a Bloom filter example will always contain two steps. First, the step will be of insertion and second step will be check whether the element is present or not. So the question says that we have to first insert two elements 10 and 7 in the bloom filter and the size of the bloom filter is given as 5. Bloom filters are more or less like arrays. Here the size of the array is 5. Now in the question we are given with two hash functions. So, so these hash functions are usually used to make the output in a given range. So here we are taking two hash functions h1 of x is x modulo 5 and h2 of x is 2x plus 6 modulo 5. So every element that is to be inserted in the bloom filter will have to first go through these two filters that is hash functions and the output that will be generated through this hash functions for that particular element will be used for storing that element in the bloom filter. And once the insertion part is done, we have to comment on the presence of the elements 14 and 15. Obviously, these elements will not be present inside the bloom filter. But let's see what output we are getting after checking their presence. So let's start with the solution. So first we'll write all the given things. Here we are given with the size of the bloom filter, which we will indicate by the letter M. And the size of the bloom filter is 5. Next, we are given with two hash functions, h1 of x is x modulo 5 and h2 of x is 2x plus 6 whole modulo 5. Next, we are supposed to insert the elements 10 and 7. So this is the given data. Now, we'll have to construct four columns. So let's construct it. So every column will have its own significance. In the first column, we'll mention all the elements that are supposed to be inserted. In the second column, we'll compute the hash 1 value and in this third column, we'll compute the hash 2 value. And after that, in the fourth column, we'll construct the bloom filter for that output. So let's take the first element. We have 10 as the first element. So let's compute the hash value of it. So if we place 
10 in place of x so the answer will be 10 modulo 5 so i hope you are aware of the concept of modulo it is nothing but the remainder after dividing 5 from 10 so we'll be left with the remainder 0 hence the hash value from the first hash function will be 0 for the element 10 similarly for the next hash function we'll have to place 10 value in place of x so this is going to give us 26 modulo 5 and the answer for this will be 1 so we have successfully calculated both the hash value for this element 10 now we will construct the bloom filter now as you know that the size of the bloom filter is 5 so we'll have 5 compartments and as you know that the array indices starts from 0 so we'll have the indices 0 1 2 3 and 4 so now we'll have to first fill all the values of each compartment in the array with zeros and then we'll have to check the hash values first hash output is 0 and second hash output is 1 so we'll have to make the value 1 wherever we have this indices 0 and 1 so let's write 1 wherever we are getting the index 0 next at index 1 we'll write the value 1 so whatever output we are getting from the hash functions we'll have to write 1 in that that particular index next element is 7 let's compute the hash 1 value of it so 7 mod 5 is 2 next let's compute the hash 2 value of this particular element 7 so if you place 7 in place of x we will get 20 mod 5 20 mod 5 is 0 so we are computed with the hash 1 and hash 2 so now you just have to take the same bloom filter in the next step also and in this bloom filter only you have you have to make changes so you can see that the hash 1 value of the element 7 is 2 so at index 2 we will be making the value 1 and the hash 2 value of the element 7 is 0 but at index 0 already we are having the value 1 so this is the final bloom filter that we have got after insertion of the two elements that we were supposed to insert as per the given question so now the first step is successfully done we are done with the insertion now let's write the given data again we have the present element inside the bloom filter as 10 and 7 and we have two hash functions then we have to check for the elements 14 and 15 as per the question and this is the bloom filter that we have got after insertion now again you have to make four columns again each column will have its own significance first column will contain all the element for which we have to check the presence of it in the bloom filter so the first element is 14 now in the second column we have to compute the hash 1 value of the element 14 so let's place it in place of x so 14 modulo 5 is 4 so 4 is the answer that we are getting next again place 14 in place of x in the second hash function so after computation we'll be getting the value as 34 modulo 5 so after calculating the answer of 34 modulo 5 we are getting the answer as 4 so we are done with the computation of both the hash functions once you are computed with both the hash outputs you have to check in the bloom filter that whether the output that you are getting at that particular index the value 1 is present or not as you, you can clearly see that at index 4 we don't have the element value as 1 so we'll have to write the comment that at index 4 the value is 0 the value is 0 it depicts that the element is not present inside the array and you can clearly see that 14 is actually not present inside the array and what is present is 10 and 7 so if it is giving you a negative answer that means if it is telling you that the element is not present inside the array it is going to be 100% accurate which is proven with this particular example here we have got a negative output and actually the negative output is true hence the output from the bloom filter will always be true negative so i hope you have understood this particular concept now we'll move on to the next element which is 15 so let's compute the hash values of it so 15 mod 5 gives you 0 so hash 1 value of 15 is 0 now let's compute the hash 2 value if we place 15 in place of x in the hash 2 function so we'll get 36 modulo 5 which is nothing but 1 we are getting 0 and 1 as the answer of the two hash functions so check in the bloom filter at index 0 and 1 whether 1 is present or not so yes at both the indices 1 is present 
if at any one of the indices zero is present then in that case the element is not present but here we are getting at both the indices one value is there in the bloom filter hence we will write the comment that the value is one at both the index zero and one which means that the element is pre present in the original set but is it the reality you can see that only 10 and 7 are present 15 is not present inside the bloom filter so, but then also according to the algorithm we are getting the answer that 15 is present inside the bloom filter so this case is your false positive case that means we are getting the positive answer which tells that the element is present inside the bloom filter but it is at the same time a false answer which means that actually the element 15 is not present inside the bloom filter hence this is a false positive case so this proves that whenever you are getting a positive answer it says that the algorithm is not going to give you 100% a surety that the element is going to be present in the bloom filter it only provides the probability of presence of an element but if you are getting the negative results then it is going to be 100% accurate that the element is not present in the array. So I hope after checking for these two elements 14 and 15 you are clear with the concept of false positive and true negative hence the recall rate is also 100%. I hope the concept of bloom filter is clear to you all. For more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.